Cosmos from DK College of Arts and Science. Today uh, we can discuss the process of centrifugation and the device used for centrifugation that is centrifuge. These are the contents. What is a centrifuge? What is centrifugation? What is the process of centrifugation? This is the process that helps to separate mixtures uh, by applying the centrifugal force. The centrifugal force means the force that draws a rotating body away from the center of rotation. So in a heterogeneous solution, uh, the particles with the higher density, that is density higher than that of the solvent, first sediment and the particles that are lighter than the solvent float on the top of the solvent. That is the basic uh, of a centrifugation process. That is the centrifugal force which pushes the heavier materials to the outside of the uh, vessel. And the theoretical basis of this technique is the effect of gravity on particles in suspension. That is, two particles of uh, different masses will settle in the vessel at different rates in response to gravity. So, heavier particles will uh, settle first and the lighter particles uh, will settle later. And centrifuge is a, a device or equipment used for uh, separating part particles from a heterogeneous uh, solution according to their size, shape, density, viscosity of the medium and the rotor speed. And this centrifuge is found in every biochemistry lab and it is used for the analysis of uh, physical properties of biomolecules, organelles, uh, etc. And for the first time, uh, Frederick Mischer exploited a uh, centrifuge in the laboratory setting. And uh, in 1872, he attempted to separate macromolecules and he was credited with the discovery of nucleic acids. And later in the 1920s and 1930s, uh, Theodor Sutter uh, developed the uh, Hultra centrifuge. And the basic principle of uh, centrifuge. An object or a particle moving in a circle at a steady angular velocity will experience a force that is a centrifugal force F directed outwards. And this is the basis of centrifugation. And this centrifugal force causes the suspended sample particles to move away from the center and also to settle in different layers according to their sedimentation pressure. So I already said denser particle. Uh, move away first and the lighter particles will sediment later according to their mass. So we can uh, say the centrifuge intensity of centrifugal force uh, if uh, is, it is defined by the equation F is equal to M omega square R. Uh, F is the uh, intensity of centrifugal force and M effective mass of the sedimenting particle and omega the angular velocity of rotation and the R, R is the distance of the migrating particles from the central axis of rotation or simply uh, uh, the radius of rotation. And then during centrifugation process, the suspended particles sediment on the bottom of the vessel due to gravity. This is before centrifugation, this is after centrifugation. The denser particles will uh, uh, sediment or pellet is formed uh, at the top of the bottom. And the rotation of the sample produces the centrifugal force, which increases the rate of sedimentation of the particle. And the rate of sedimentation of particles in the centrifugation is called the sedimentation uh, coefficient, and uh, uh, its unit is called the Swedberg unit. So the suspension left above the sediment after the centrifugation is called the supernatal. So this is the pellet uh, which sediment at the bottom and the suspension left above the sediment is called supernatal, which is called supernatal. So the basic components of uh, a centrifuge, what are the basic uh, essential components of a centrifuge here? A metal rotor with holes in it to accommodate uh, the vessel liquid. That is a centrifuge rotor is the rotating unit of the centrifuge which has fixed holes drilled at an angle so that uh, test tubes are placed inside these holes and the rotor, uh, the rotor spins to aid in the separation of the material. So uh, a metal rotor 
uh, is the basic uh, part, uh, first part, and the second one is the motor, a motor with the drive shaft to spin the sample. And there are different types of rotors are uh, used in centrifugation. And these are, uh, there are yes, uh, three types are mentioned here, fixed angle rotors, vertical rotors, and uh, swinging bucket uh, rotors. First one uh, is the fixed angle rotor. Uh, it is the uh, most commonly used uh, uh, rotor. Uh, here the vessel lies at a fixed angle. The angle of the tube with respect to the axis of rotation is nearly 40 to 40 degree. And uh, it is used for uh, differential centrifugation for melting of particles uh, and like cellular components, nucleic acids, etc. And it is, uh, it's, uh, it needs, uh, the particles move radially outwards and the particles travel a short distance so that the separation is uh, faster in this uh, fixed angle. Uh, rotors. Here the rotors uh, which holds the tubes uh, in the exact same fixed angle. So the name uh, fixed angle rotor. So this is the uh, fixed angle rotor and this is the axis of rotation and this is the uh, sample tube uh, and the tube angle uh, between the axis of rotation and the centrifugal uh, field is uh, 40 to 40 degree uh, Degree. Next one is the uh, vertical tube rotor. Vertical tube rotor means here the sample tube remains in an upright position that is vertical parallel to the rotor axis. That is, it holds two parallel to the axis of uh, rotation. That is, it is in the axis of rotation, and the tubes are here are just parallel to the axis of uh, rotation. So, here the particles move a short distance, and mm -hmm. so that the time of separation is shorter. And the pellet, so that it is that the pellet will be deposited on the outer wall of the tube, so that the pellet may fall back into the solution at the end of centrifugation. That is a drawback of this drawback of this vertical tube rotor. Another one is the swinging bucket rotor. Singing bucket uh, means a uh, rotor with the variable angles. And it is the rotor in which uh, tubes are located in the buckets. Bucket means tube holders. And those buckets are not rigidly attached to the uh, rotor with a certain angle. And buckets are attached to the rotor uh, in a way that uh, they allows the spin horizontally. Hmm? So, swinging bucket rotors, uh, these rotors are buckets that swing position when the rotor moves that is the tube itself reoriented 90 degree to the axis of rotation as it spins and the particles move longer distance so good separation and it did require long longer time for centrifugation and it is easier to withdraw withdraw supernatant without disturbing the pellet and this is about swinging back a rotor and this is the axis of rotation and this is the sample tube when applying the centrifugal force. Uh, the tube becomes in a horizontal position that is 90 degree to the uh, axis of rotation. And different types of centrifuges. Uh, three different types of centrifuges are there close field centrifuge, high speed centrifuge, and the ultra centrifuge. Low speed centrifuges are most ordinary type of centrifuge. They are simple, small, and the least expensive. And it used to separate rapidly sedimenting substances like uh, red blood cells or large precipitates of chemical reactions. And the most of the clinical work is done by these models. And its maximum speed is up to 5,000 uh, RPM. RPM means uh, rotation per minute. And they do not have a temperature control system in the uh, device. Second one is the high speed centrifuge, and it is used in more sophisticated uh, biochemical applications. And it has higher speeds, uh, just like the maximum speed of 25,000 RPM. And the higher speeds and the temperature control of the rotor chamber are essential in the high speed centrifuge. And it is used to collect microorganism cells large cellular organelles and the separation of uh, temperature sensitive biological samples like enzymes etc and this is the 
picture of a low speed centrifuge and a high speed centrifuge. Next one is the ultra centrifuge, which is the most sophisticated refrigerator type of uh, centrifuge with the um, maximum speed of 75,000 RPM. And uh, the, the high heat produced uh, is, uh, due, the high heat is produced during the uh, high speed of centrifugation uh, process. So the spinning chamber must be refrigerated and uh, kept at high vacuum. And it is used for both the preparatory work and uh, analytical works. And it is used for the separation of viruses and the determination of the molecular weights of proteins, same things, DNA, RNA, etc. So ultra centrifuge can be of two types. They are preparatory ultra centrifuge and uh, analytical ultra centrifuge. Let's see the difference between analytical centrifuge and preparatory centrifuge. In analytical centrifuge, only a uh, small sample is used for the centrifugation process. And in this, uh, an optical system is used to monitor the sample during the centrifugation process. And uh, here, uh, only pure samples are used for the centrifugation so that we can uh, get the preserve, we can precisely determine the sedimentation coefficient and the molecular weight of uh, molecules. So in preparatory uh, centrifuge, here large sample size can be used and here is no optical system uh, to anal analyze the molecules during the centrifugation and uh, uh, less pure samples can be used here and it is used to estimate uh, only used only used to estimate the sedimentation coefficient and the molecular weight of the uh, molecules and then major types of centrifugation there are different uh, two different types of centrifugation that is differential centrifugation and uh, density gradient centrifugation differential centrifugation means separation carried in a suspending medium which is homogeneous are known as differential centrifugation. That is, uh, it is common procedure, it is a common procedure in microbiology and the cytology lab used to separate organelles uh, from where? Uh, from uh, whole cells. And from that, uh, the sample is first homogeneous. Homogeneous means cell disruption to break the cell membrane and mix up the cell contents. And the product of homogenization is called homogenate and this homogenate is uh, subjected to repeated centrifugation and each time recovering the pellet and taking the supernatant and by increasing the centrifugal force uh, we can get the uh, components of um, um, homogenate we can get the different components of the homogenate uh, at the successive centrifugation so the homogenate uh, with the mixture of particles having different size, mass, shape, and density uh, is subjected to repeated centrifugation in a successive manner by progressively increasing the centrifugal force. The supernatant of every centrifugation is subjected to further centrifugation at a high speed and the particles separate out in a successive steps in order of uh, decreasing size, mass, and uh, gravity and this is the diagram of differential centrifugation mm, this is a sample with the homogeneous homogeneous homogenate uh, with the different uh, cell organelles uh, and the first uh, we are applying the centrifugal force the largest uh, the heaviest uh, particle will sediment and uh, uh, second in the second we take the supernatant and increase in the centrifugation process uh, increase in the rpm uh, we will get uh, the second uh, largest material and just like uh, we, uh, we can collect we can collect all the uh, materials from the homogenate by successively increasing the uh, centrifugation uh, process or uh, revolution per minute and next about density gradient centrifugation this is the method where the uh, components of a sample are separated on the basis of their density in a dense medium or a density gradient in a centrifuge and uh, the particle uh, the uh, molecules uh, can be separate by their differential rate of sedimentation in a density gradient and this density gradient can be generated by placing layer after layer of gradient media such as sucrose in a tube with the heaviest layer denser layer at the bottom and the lightest layer at the top so it permits the separation of 
multi component mixtures of macro molecules and the measurement of sedimentation coefficient so there are two types of sedimentation uh, density gradient centrifugation they are solid centrifugation rate solid centrifugation and the isopycnic centrifugation first one is the rate solid centrifugation here the sample is centrifuged in a preformed gradient a gradient is firstly formed a preformed gradient and it is important in separating particles that different size but not in their density that is here the density gradient is discontinuous or a uh, step gradient is produced in rate solvent centrifugation that is uh, the uh, gradient is produced by adding the layers of the solution of various densities into uh, the tube that is upper zone with the low density and the bottom have higher density here the uh, separation uh, is based on the particle size and uh, rate of migration of uh, particles in the medium and this is the diagram of uh, uh, red zonal centrifugation this is a density gradient preformed density gradient and the sample is applied here and after centrifugation uh, process uh, the particles uh, just like uh, separate just like this mm. next one is the isopycnic centrifugation and isopycnic centrifugation uh, uh, here um, there is no preformed uh, gradient is not there here a self generating gradient forms during centrifugation a density gradient is formed only during the centrifugation process so that is the that the gradient is steep that is the density gradient is continuous that is the density will linearly uh, increase towards the bottom of the tube there, so that uh, the uh, higher uh, top have uh, lower density and the bottom have higher density and in between this uh, they are increasing uh, towards the bottom of the uh, tube and then uh, um, density is increasing towards the bottom that is called a, um, a steep that is a density gradient is continuous and uh, each particle will sediment only to the position in the centrifuge tube at which the gradient density is equal to its own density that is called its uh, isopycnic centrifugation and the molecule will migrate to the region of the tube depending on the uh, based on the density and not on the uh, migration uh, migration on uh, migration or speed of the particles not on the migration of the speed of the particles so it is uh, based on the uh, density of the particles and used for separating particles with different density this is the isopycnic centrifugation and uh, uh, gradient is formed during the centrifugation process and the uh, molecules are separated according to their uh, density and this is right zonal centrifugation versus uh, equilibrium uh, sorry uh, isopycnic or uh, uh, equilibrium density gradient centrifugation and next about the applications of centrifugation there are several applications of centrifugation. They are first used for popular purification procedures like DNA extraction, protein extraction, and extraction of blood cells. And the removal of cellular elements from blood to provide cell-free serum or plasma. And purification of mammalian cells. And large industrial centrifuges are used in the oil industry to remove solids from the drilling fluid and it is used to separate fat from milk and uh, used in washing machines to skews out water from pores. These are several applications of uh, the centrifuge and these are the references. Okay.